So what happens is when I turn this on, just watch the little LED here, it'll come on, it'll flash green for a, a while, then notice it's flashing two red LEDs. That's a bit of a clue as to what the issue could be. So we'll pull the back off, we'll have a look at it and see if we can uh, make this uh, into a, a simple fix. Okay, so what I've got here is a uh, Plasma TV Panasonic TH50P Z80A. If we turn on the uh, manual button there, we can see that the flash is green and then it goes into a uh, fault code area and it's flashing two red lights. I have a common fault with them. Um, after a lot of research I've been able to figure out what it is. But these have a fault code system in them, similar to the automotive industry. Of course, this is our power supply here. Um, one way to test it, uh, with both the 10 flashing uh, LEDs and also the two LED flashes, is uh, to disconnect the power supply itself from the, the main board. So by isolating these three connectors here, one, two, and the third one there from the main board, that separates our power supply. So in theory now, if uh, the power supply is okay, when I turn it on, we should have uh, a backlight as well as the TV should turn on independently. So by turning on the power supply here, we can hear some relay clicks in the background, but we're getting no LED light here, and of course the screen itself is not uh, producing a, uh, a white background. So it looks like it might be in the power supply. So I'm just looking a little further into this uh, particular fault here um, with our two LEDs flashing. <clears throat> it's powered up at the moment so I need to be very careful particularly on the high side of things. I've got a plastic um, tool that I'm using to point things out. Be very aware of the high voltages in this particular area. Uh, you've probably noticed up the top here uh, there are two um, voltages mentioned. One is uh, VE and that's a hundred and 145, I haven't got my glasses on at the moment, so a bit dodgy. Um, and V sustain is 190 volts. According to my schematic here, uh, the V sus or V sustainable voltage is at terminal P2 or connector P2 and it's terminal 1. As you can see, I've got that already hooked up for us. Here is my uh, connector here and I've got a good ground source on my chassis. What we'll do now is just power it up and we'll see if we get the available voltage necessary that's listed up here on our label. So I'm just about to power it on. You can see it's got 1.3 volts even though the uh, button is not pressed but let's just see what happens when we turn it on and you can hear the relays click. And as you can see, we're not getting in the hundreds of volts, we've only got two volts there. Clearly that's not enough. So we need to trace the uh, fault a little bit further. This particular model uses a standby voltage of positive 15 volts, which we're going to test now on a term, a connector P7 and terminal number one. So as you can see, what we need to do is P7, terminal one, is where we're going to do our 15 volts there. So keep an eye on the multimeter once again. So if we turn it on, we should see 15 volts come up. And for a short period of time, we do. On these Panasonic plasmas, they do suffer from common faults. One of the, uh, well, there's two ICs that tend to give problems on this particular model. This IC over here supplies our 15 volts standby voltage which we know that we saw that on, uh, on uh, P7 terminal, uh, connector number, or con connector P7, terminal number one. And this one over here is our um, V sus, which should have given us the 190 volts, which it didn't give us anything at all, did it? It only gave us around about two volts. 
I've got my freezer spray with me here so what I'm going to do is just try and freeze out this little IC here which provides us with the V-SUS or V-Sustainable voltage which should be 190 volts which is what we're not getting so I'll freeze that over and see if we can get it to uh, fire up the uh, TV and the power supply we'll just give it a little bit of time to penetrate through the, the housing there to get into the uh, layers of the IC We turn him on, have a look at the fresh flashing green light, and if it works, it should go solid eventually. There we go. We've got our TV working, AV1 showing. But now we know that our fault is within our little IC just here. So if I replace that, our plasma TV should be up and running. I've been able to purchase online the little ICs that suit. Uh, what we need for our power supply uh, and also our little capacitors as you can see these suit the the two little circuit boards here and here this circuit board here is to do with our 15 volt standby and this one is our uh, V sus and this is the one that's actually faulty so now I will pull off the power supply and um, making sure that we discharge the cap capacitors making sure that we're working safe and so I can disconnect it off the the, the frame pull all our connectors off etc and then I can uh, pull these individual little circuit boards off and that'll be my next stage it's also a good idea to take a photo of the board before you pull it off so that you can tell where all the connectors go afterwards um, and that way you make sure you get everything back in the right spot All of the 25 screws that I just undid uh, were indicated by little arrows so it's quite easy to find them all uh, it's no major issue but it is a little bit time consuming there are also nine plastic clips that need to be released just by use of uh, pointy nose pliers and gently release the uh, circuit board off the frame um, it's just a little bit fiddly to get to but don't put excess stress on the the circuit board itself just gently pull them together and they should come apart all right now that we've got the frame out uh, there's two plastic insulator um, sheets that can get pulled out of the road just remember where they go because they need to go back in the same place of course this is our high side isn't it and this is where our um, ICs that need to be repaired are located as well now that we have access to the back of the uh, main power supply the main power supply board we can unsolder these IC boards this one over here and this one over here now that I've removed the little uh, circuit boards with the ICs on them they're very very similar in construction I don't want to confuse them so what I've done is as you can see here it's listed as MC301 so what I've done is I've put three little marks three little texture marks and three little grooves on there as well so I can identify with that plus I put a black mark just on the edge there and a black black mark on the board here the repair kit that I've purchased actually came with a, a bit of a diagram to show you what to replace and where to replace it and as you can see we're replacing the IC itself but also the surface mount capacitor that's here now the kit as I mentioned came with all those components um, as you can see the ICs are there around that way ICs are there and the little surface mount capacitors are right in there if you can see them 
but I've chosen to go with this style that I've seen uh, used elsewhere as well and they're still a surface mount but they're a little bit taller a little bit easier to install so they're the ones that I'll be fitting so I'll be honest with you I've never actually really done a uh, surface mount IC before um, they're quite small as you can see um, so this will be a new experience for me hopefully it goes well but you've got to have a starting point somewhere don't you I'm now going to use what's called the flooding method to uh, try and remove that little IC so you actually add more solder to get the solder off and the reason that you do that is because um, you're creating one big heat sink rather than trying to lift every single individual leg off you're trying to create a bridge between them and uh, that in turn will get it off we've got to be careful with there's a little tiny resistor just there you can see that and there's a capacitor that we've got to pull off shortly anyway so we'll just try and add a little bit more solder here so once you've done that um, you just get a sharp instrument of some description I'm using a pair of tweezers here which are flat blade They're quite handy just gently put it under there and heat this up and it should eventually pop so I'll get that one off One thing to be aware of obviously now that I've got so much solder on there I need to make sure that each of those individual connections are free from solder so we don't have any bridging points where uh, solder is connecting between two points so just tidy these up I think the rest are okay so I've just added a tiny bit more solder to this little capacitor and I'll see if I can lift it off without damaging anything else Here's the new ICs that have got to go in. Um, you might notice that there is a little notch taken out one side that gives us the location of the IC to make sure that we're facing the correct way. Um, and I've double checked everything. So according to our little diagram here, we can see that that faces towards the circuit board legs. Uh, you can see that little cutaway there. I'm just going to use a little bit of flux to um, help my soldering. Uh, it should flow a lot better. Whoops, one of my tracks is sitting up. It's not a good sign. Got to be very careful with that. Don't want uh, any issues there. I've got to be very careful not to create any little bridges between them so I'm just trying to pull out as opposed to wipe across. One of the advantages of working with these uh, electrolytic capacitors um, is the actual size. Here's the size of the ones that I just pulled out. There's one right there. As you can see it's absolutely tiny. So the one that I'm using and that seems to be the most common one to be used is this electrolytic capacitor. Um, the only thing is that you've got to pull the little legs up so that they face vertically and then that'll fit onto the board in, in place of the um, one that I've just pulled off. So once that's up and they're vertical then I can solder it in place. I'll just tin those little legs uh, then it'll fit onto the board no probs. That actually looks like it's soldered pretty well. I'll just have a really good look at this now because I think I've got it right. But we won't know of course until I've got it fitted back on the board and I press the big button. But um, just having a close look at it with my magnifying glass. 
looks pretty good and the IC looks pretty good too. I've now got my USB digital microscope. I'm just going to double check all my connections and make sure I'm happy with them. So just looking at the IC um, legs there, just make sure I'm focused, make sure there's no little bridges there. Uh, that looks okay on that side. Let's cruise across to the other side there. Uh, where am I looking? Not in the right spot. There we go. Along there, along there, along there. That looks pretty good. Uh, whoops, other way. That's pretty good. Now we'll have a look at that uh, little capacitor that we worked on before. Uh, a bit closer. See that leg down there? That looks like it's soldered okay. And from this side, uh, where are we? It looks like the leg is soldered pretty good there as well. So, um, yep, that's a win in my books. Okay, so they're back on the board. Now I need to reassemble the power supply board, then put it back in the TV, press the button, and hopefully, hey presto. So the plasma TV is all back together. Um, I've got my power supply uh, back on the board, all the wiring's done. So this is the moment of truth. Uh, just to make sure that I'm safe, I've hooked it up to my isolation transformer. Excuse the mess and uh, this ensures that I'll be safe while I'm doing any testing. When we turn it on there should be the blinking of the light and then it should come on. So we've got our uh, light that's flashing there. You can see the backlight come on to a, an extent there and it should go solid. What did I notice down there? We have got, let's have a look, what's that say there? HDMI, woohoo, we're on a winner. Well check it out. I'm surprised just as much as you are. So I've obviously got to do some more testing as yet, but uh, it appears it's all okay. All our fans are rotating. You can see them going around. So that's a good sign too. Now I've just got to check out the sound and all the other things. So hopefully we're on a winner, guys. Uh, I've got it running for a little while now. I'll run it for a few hours just to make sure it's okay. Have you ever seen this channel? It's pretty awesome. You should watch it. Uh, Miracle Max is the name of the guy keep an eye out for it on YouTube. Um, I'm going to donate it to uh, the local TAFE or tertiary education um, college where I work. Um, so hopefully they'll get some use out of it. So that's another recycle save, save from the uh, rubbish tip. And that's uh, a good thing for the environment as well. I've just been informed I've been photobombed, so I don't know, you can't trust anyone nowadays.